Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the mammalian metabolism and processing of vitamin B5, also known as pantothenic acid or pantothenate. So pantothenate is an essential B vitamin, meaning we cannot actually generate through biosynthetic pathways pantothenate. We rely completely on getting it through the diet. Now pantothenate is not the active form of vitamin B5. Really vitamin B5 is going to be processed into coenzyme A and one other thing that we'll talk about in a little bit. But we have the enzymes to process pantothenate into CoA, but we have to get the pantothenate first. So in some ways you could consider that the precursor. All right, pantothenic can actually be taken as a supplement in the form of pantothenic acid. You can find these in a drugstore. Um, there's another form of this that you can actually get called pantothine. That molecule is shown over here on the far right. We'll come back to that at the very end. But the most common form of the supplement is just pantothenic acid. Okay? Also, you can obtain pantothenic acid through the diet, but here we're going to focus on its processing. So here's pantothenate. Pantothenate is going to first have to be transported into cells um, that are actually going to build up coenzyme A. So it's going to run through this transporter in cell membranes called PAN-F, is at least what it's called in most bacteria. Once pantothenate is in the cell, it's going to react with an enzyme typically called CoAA, that's the gene name, but the enzyme itself is called pantothenate kinase. It's going to phosphorylate this hydroxyl group shown over here on the far left, as you see right here using the phosphate from ATP, that's going to give us 4 prime phosphopantothenate. Now, the next enzyme, again named for the gene, it's CoAB, but the enzyme itself is actually called 4 prime phosphopantothenoyl cysteine synthetase. Very long name. Essentially, what it's going to do is it's going to use the power again of ATP, but it's going to take a cysteine residue, the cysteine amino acid, and it's going to ligate it onto this carbon right here that you see where my mouse is on 4 phosphopentothenate. Okay? And what that's going to do is create another amide bond, and you can see here that the amide bond is to a cysteine residue, a cysteine amino acid. That molecule right here is called, again, 4 prime phosphopantothenoyl cysteine. Okay, long name, kind of a tongue twister. Now we have another enzyme, CoAC. This enzyme, at least in humans, is called 4 prime phosphopantothenoyl cysteine decarboxylase. This carboxyl group, that's the C terminus, at least of the cysteine amino acid, is going to be removed as carbon dioxide. Okay, so notice it's removed here. We, all we have here is the uh, alpha carbon, and here's the thiol of that, what was cysteine. This molecule is called 4 prime phosphopantothene. 4 prime phosphopantothene. Now, you may actually see this molecule in one of your biochemistry courses. You may actually see it in fatty acid synthesis. Um, and that's because the acyl carrier protein in lipid synthesis, that is fatty acid synthesis, actually has this as a cofactor. However, I will say this is not the, the source of that 4-phosphopantothene cofactor. It's not the source of it. But it is the identity of the functional group that's going to be used by the acyl carrier protein in fatty acid synthesis. We do have another means to generate this 4-phosphopantothene, and that's through this molecule, uh, pantothine which can actually be formed in an equilibrium reaction from pantothene. Okay, pantothene is actually another form of vitamin B5 that can also be taken, although it's less common. The pantothene can also be imported into the cell, and the pantothene can actually undergo one of two reactions. Either it can be uh, oxidized with another molecule of itself into pantothene. Notice the sulfur right here can actually be oxidized into a disulfide linkage. So this molecule, pantothene, is actually two molecules of pantothene in a disulfide linkage. Uh, that's just an equilibrium reaction, essentially to store excess pantothene, but it can react with this enzyme, CoAA, which is the same one as shown right here, and it's going to transform pantothene ultimately into 4-phosphopantothene. So this CoAA can actually react with pantothenate and pantothene. But that gives us two sources potentially for 4-phosphopantothene. This next enzyme, CoAD, this is an enzyme called 4-phosphopantothene adenylyl transferase. What this enzyme does is it transfers the AMP moiety from an ATP molecule onto this phosphate of 4-prime phosphopantothene. 
So notice here's that phosphate. We have another phosphate, the ribose ring, and adenine. So this whole region over here is adenosine monophosphate. So now we have a diphosphate linkage between this chain right here and this uh, adenosine. Okay? That molecule is called dephosphocoenzyme A. So we're almost there, but dephosphocoenzyme A, as you may guess, is going to have to be phosphorylated to make coenzyme A. This is catalyzed by CoAE, another gene that encodes the human version of dephosphocoenzyme A kinase. Notice that this hydroxyl group right here, which is actually the 3 position, is actually going to have to be phosphorylated. That's going to be done by this enzyme, and once it's phosphorylated, we actually have coenzyme A. This is actually the mature and fully functional form of vitamin B5. So coenzyme A is really going to have three major functions, at least that I can think of off the top of my head. One, which is the least common one that we think about, it's going to be the source of this 4 prime phosphopantothene cofactor present in ACL carrier protein in fatty acid synthesis. I'm going to have a separate video where we actually look at how that functional group or cofactor is transferred from coenzyme A to the ACL carrier protein, but just know that the source of this cofactor for that is coenzyme A directly. The second function, which we normally think about, is acetyl-CoA. So it turns out that two carbons can essentially be transferred onto the sulfur group of CoA to make acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is what's produced from pyruvate and the action of the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase, which is in the mitochondria. That gives us a central coenzyme acetyl-CoA. But also coenzyme A can be used to activate other types of molecules that are typically carbon chains, such as fatty acids and other molecules such as succinyl-CoA, which we also find as an intermediate in the TCA cycle, Krebs cycle. Okay, so those are the three main functions of CoA, and this is how we actually get CoA in vivo inside the human cell. We actually don't intake CoA directly, we have to intake actually uh, one of these, such as pantothenate or uh, pantothean, and then through this series of enzymatic processes, we can convert those forms of the vitamin into coenzyme A. So hopefully that makes sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.